This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. It's such a joy to be together, isn't it? Today's message is entitled, Wrestling the Blessing. Wrestling the Blessing. And you can already tell that our text will be the reading from Genesis, and we'll get to that. But as we think about what it means to engage in wrestling the blessing, I'm put in mind of Jesus' words when he said, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened up to you. Our reading from Luke tells about a persistent individual who won't give up, who persists in prayer. And when we think about persistence, when it comes to engaging God, when it comes to pressing into the divine majesty, this can look many different ways. Back in 1929, there was a farm boy named Clyde Tombaugh who wanted to become an astronomer. And so he built for himself his own telescope, and he became educated in astronomy, and he was soon hired by an observatory outside of Boston. And he was given the task of discovering a possible new planet. So this young astronomer was given the task of looking at photographic images, one after the other, all day, all night. As he told Time Magazine, I looked at, over the course of a year, over 20 million star images. He said it was agonizing work, it was thrilling, but at the same time, it took everything I had as I pressed into the darkness looking for a new light. And then in February 1930, he discovered a planet known as Pluto. It was groundbreaking. It was the greatest discovery in over 100 years in astronomy. And it only happened because this young seeker wouldn't stop looking for the light. When we think about what it means to seek God, the question is, do we have that desire to see the light? And we're reminded that some of God's greatest work happens in the darkness. At the very beginning of the book of Genesis, we see that it's in the darkness that God begins creation. Even now, God does some of God's greatest work in the darkness. The mystery of conception happens in the darkness as only God can see it. Life emerges out of the darkness. Even in our lives, it's in those places of deepest darkness where God often awakes us to the light. Notice that Nicodemus the Pharisee, after he was wondering what Jesus meant when Jesus talked about being born from above, he came to Jesus when? By night. We rightfully at times fear the darkness, but this is where God does some of God's greatest work in us as we're awakened to the light. Notice Jacob is in the darkness, both literally but also spiritually. Jacob's story, we may remember, is a story of craftiness, dishonesty, manipulation, he managed to get his earthly father's blessing when it was actually a blessing that his older brother Esau was entitled to. The trickster Jacob managed to steal the blessing in a sense, and then he's on the run, and Esau wants to get him, to destroy him, out of vengeance, out of despair that he missed the blessing. So throughout the years, Jacob has been blessed. He's had ups and downs, great moments of what would be called earthly success, but also a life of continually being on the run, in a sense, in the darkness. Running away from something. Our reading takes us to this point where Jacob and his wealth and family and all his resources, he's moved them across the river. Yabak is the name of the river, which in Hebrew means empty. So in that sense, Jacob represents what that river signifies, which is that Jacob has emptied himself of all his things, and now he's on the other side of the river in Esau's territory. Esau is coming with 400 men to kill Jacob. 
And suddenly Jacob finds himself in the darkness wrestling with a man. A man who will be revealed as God. This is one of the more mysterious texts in the Bible. It's intriguing, really, because it talks about what it means to wrestle with our maker. And in Jacob's case, he prevails, and God and God's divine majesty allows him to be wounded as well. And in the midst of that struggle, what Jacob really wants is a blessing. He's wrestling for the blessing, something that this world could never give him, something that his own father, even though he stole that blessing, never truly gave Jacob satisfaction in. And so he's given the blessing, but he'll never be the same. He's limping, he's wounded, he's contended with God. And in that darkness, light has come to him. And what we see if we continue in in Genesis is that Esau does show up with his entourage of warriors, and reconciliation breaks out. Jacob and Esau, there are hugs and tears. And so we might say that the lesson here for Jacob is that he could not enter reconciliation and connection with others truly until he was right with God. Until he had received God's blessing, he could not be who he is called to be, to be redeemed, to be given a new name, the name Israel. And he would go on to represent a holy nation, a people set apart through whom the Savior of the world would come. One way to understand this scripture from the Christian perspective is to look at Philippians chapter 2, where the apostle says, have this same mind among you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but rather he emptied himself, just like that river Yabak, the emptying. The Son of God emptied himself for a season and humbled himself to the point of even going to the cross. And now he has been highly exalted and given the name that is above every name. Notice Jacob said, what's your name? We now know his name. King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus, who on the cross did the wrestling for us, taking upon himself our sins, our manipulations, our craftiness. And he has offered forgiveness to us that in our moments of deepest darkness, he too has entered our darkness and has risen from the dead, offering us forgiveness and blessing. Before Jesus ascended into heaven, we're told that he blessed his disciples. And so the question is, do we engage in wrestling with the blessing today? It would seem that we don't have to, because Jesus gives us his blessing freely, what we call the Father's blessing. In Jesus' baptism, the Father said, this is my beloved in whom I'm well pleased. And so by our baptisms and by our faith in Christ, we too can receive the blessing without having to wrestle for it. It's that free gift. John's Gospel says, for all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. That very blessing, the Father's blessing that we all deeply need and seek ultimately, it comes to us freely by grace through Jesus. But we also know that we do wrestle in life. We wrestle with ourselves, our own struggles, various forms of challenge as we walk at times in darkness. And what we learn is that that's where God meets us most powerfully. That his light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. You are loved unconditionally by God and Jesus. That's what God's blessing means for us at all times, even in those places of deepest darkness, that you're loved, that there's nothing we can do to get God to love us any more or any less than God already does in Jesus. That's the heart of the Father's blessing, that we're forgiven, that we don't have to earn the blessing or wrestle for it, that we can receive it by faith, and that we can pass it on to others, that we can invite others to know the Father's blessing which is that thing we seek most of all. 
like Jacob, we may have accumulated a lot of things. We may be very independent. We may be on the run. But God is the light in the darkness wherever we are. This is the same God who says through his son, Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Have we received Jesus by faith? Do we know confidently that we are children of God? This is the heart of the Father's blessing. We sometimes see others struggle. We struggle. And we might like to prevent that from happening. Perhaps we've heard that illustration before about the butterfly that's emerging from the cocoon and struggling, and if you try to relieve that butterfly of its struggles and pull it out, you'll actually kill it because it has to get the fluid into its wings through the struggle itself. And as we walk together in faith, there may be times when we see each other struggling, and we might want to save them from that, but there's only one Savior, the one who gave his life for us on the cross and unleashes for us freely the Father's blessing, who shows us that we're never alone, that Jesus walks with us, and he says, seek and you shall find. Keep knocking and the door shall be open to you. This is the God who is light, life, and love, who calls us to receive the blessing, which is the most important thing we can have on this journey of faith, no matter where we are or how difficult it is right now. Receive again the Father's blessing. The Father who says, you are my beloved, in you I am well pleased. Amen.